Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Fix. My name is Peter Loshak. It's week eight in college football. Today is Wednesday, October 17th. And uh, of course, every Wednesday to the end of the uh, college football season, we, I'm very excited to announce that uh, we will be doing a video as we have done for many, many years with Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Last week, of course, uh, we did our first uh, video of the season and uh, and Steve from collegefootballwinning.com told us to take, uh, to take Iowa over Indiana. Indiana was a tempting home dog to some, but Steve from collegefootballwinning.com said, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. Take Iowa. And of course, uh, look what happened. Iowa absolutely steamrolled them. E uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Thanks so much for the winner from last week. How's college football been going for you this year so far? Thank you for that very kind introduction, Peter. College football season is going very well for us. We are 47 and 26 in all of our college football betting recommendations. So that's Winning against the spread at the rate of 64.38%. That is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going well, to put it mildly. Steve, a, a man of understatement. All right, so Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. The, uh, the game we're going to cover this week is an interesting one. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about this one. I am as well. Miami, Ohio against Army. Of course, Miami, Ohio is, of course, uh, coming off of a, of a big win over Kent State. Four straight covers, but Army's been great as well. They've covered four out of their last five, and uh, one was a push. Depending on the number you got, the question here is uh, how is uh, Miami going to respond? To, uh, to guarding and defending the, uh, the option offensive army, and how much will they care about this game since it is, of course, a road game, non-conference game for Miami of Ohio. And I was looking at this game thinking maybe a shot with the over. Seems like Miami's going to struggle at least a little bit with Army's offense that's been so good this year, and Miami should put up some points as well on their own, and it's a very, very low total in the upper 40s. So I was scratching my head about this one, thinking maybe about a shot with the over, but I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. And uh, as far as the matchups are concerned, that's key to this game, and I'm sure you'll be able to shed a lot of great light on that. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Army's about a seven and a half or eight point favorite. What do you like here? After losing their first three games against the spread, this is Miami, Ohio, by an average of 13.33 points per game. That's against the spread, mind you. Miami, Ohio, as you said, they have won the last four games against the spread, but by an average of 13 and an eighth points per game. That's an average against the spread. Nearly two touchdowns. So they've come on strong. Army had this dominant victory over San Jose State last week, 52 to three, crushing the closing spread by 31 and a half points. The box score, however, Peter, does not paint an accurate picture. Army recovered four fumbles, finishing at plus four in turnover margin for that game. If you looked at just offensive and defensive production for both teams in that game, Army outgained San Jose State by 224 yards. Very respectable, of course. But if you use average college football yards per point this year, average is 14.4 yards per point. So that victory at 224 yard, uh, outgaining San Jose State by 224 yards, that would equate to 15.56 points in their victory. So by production, offensive defensive production, they should have won by 15 and a half points. Instead, you know, they crushed them by 49. So it, had they gone just by that offensive defensive production and not gotten that, that great turnover margin, that would have been an against the spread loss for Army. 15 and a half points would not have covered their clo the closing line of 17 and a half points where Army was favored. So turnovers, so I'm talking about turnovers here. Turnovers, you hear me say this in so many videos, so many years now, Peter. As a statistical category, turnovers are the most impactful yet most unpredictable or random of the critically significant college football metrics. So sooner or later, there is a regression to the mean. Teams and therefore betters simply cannot count on a team getting points off of turnovers. So Army backers should not count on turnovers for points here like they got last week. That all might suggest, this introduction might suggest taking Miami, Ohio and the points, right? Well, I don't think so. Army, you know this, you said this, everyone who's watched even a little college football knows Army's bringing their option attack. That means tons of rushing. In fact, no surprise, they're number two in total rushing yards per game uh, in the country. Miami, Ohio has played just last week. They played an up-tempo spread offense. And now they have to face the 
polar opposite with Army's slow, death by a thousand rushing cuts offense. The average rushing offense that Miami has faced so far this season, unlike Army bringing their, their second ranked rushing offense, the average that Miami, Ohio has faced is 76th. That's their average ranking. In fact, Miami has only faced one rushing offense in the top 25 this season, and that's Cincinnati. And Cincinnati shut out Miami 21 to nothing. That was actually Cincinnati's first shutout since 2014. So Army, because of their style of offense, they dominate time of possession, and that is certainly true this season. They hold on to the ball for an average of 39 minutes and 44 seconds. That's unheard of. That's easily number one in the nation for time of possession. They simply limit their opponent's scoring opportunities. And when opponents do get themselves into the red zone against Army, Army this season, their red zone defense is 10th in the country versus FBS competition. So based on our projections here, Peter, each team should get around 10 drives this game. So follow this calculation. This might help you with the total, too. Each time Miami scores, they average six points. So we're talking about all scores. We're talking about safeties. We're talking about touchdowns and extra points. And they score 32.58% of their drives, on 32.58% of their drives so far this season. So if they're going to get 10 drives and they average six points, you do the math, they should get 19.55 points this game. Let's do the same thing for Army. Give them 10 drives. Each time Army scores, they average 6.72 points per score because they don't like to kick field goals and they're not particularly good at it and they know it. They score on 46.55% of their drives, at least so far this season. So doing the math there, that gives them 31.28 points. So if you put those together, you've got a difference of 11.73 points. Well, guess where this betting line opened? It opened with Army minus 11 and a half, almost identical to that number we got from the calculation, 11.73 versus 11 and a half was the opening line. Now it has since dropped to Army minus seven and a half. And you might be thinking, look at that line movement. That line movement suggests that Miami is the right side here, right? Well, since Jeff Munkin has taken over head coaching responsibilities at Army 2014, the betting line direction indicated the right side, just 33.93% of all of Army's games. So don't be afraid to go against the line movement here. Here's another a betting indicator that some people use. Currently, the Army side is getting more than 70% of the public betting. Now, it's only Wednesday. But if this maintains, the question we need to ask is, should we be afraid to bet on the majority side here? This year, home teams in FBS games getting at least 70% of the public betting, like Army is currently, they're 23 and 22 against the spread. So there's been no disadvantage to betting with that side, that side getting at least 70% of the public betting so far this season. If anything, slight advantage. Army has only lost one game this year against the spread, you said that, and that was versus Duke. That score there was 34 to 14. That was a 20 point straight up loss for Army, with Army closing as a 13 and a half point underdog in that game. But again, if we use offensive defensive production, Duke outgained Army by just 16 yards in that game. So using those average college football yards per point, that equals just over a single point. That, that should have been, so by offensive defensive production, that should have been a 26 to 25 game. The Army lost two fumbles in that game. And remember, that was their first game of the season. Since that game, Peter, Army has not lost a fumble since then. Not one since then. They are taking care of the ball. Miami's straight up overall record. This is, I think this part probably after all that is probably um, perhaps the most persuasive part of, of why I like the Army side here. Miami's straight up overall record is just three and four, but they're three and one in the MAC, and they're in second place narrowly in the MAC East. Second only to Buffalo, who, by the way, Buffalo's only loss this year was to Army. Buffalo is Miami's next game after Army. That game has huge conference ramifications for both teams. After studying Miami head coach Chuck Martin, Peter, I've come to the conclusion that he's more focused on his conference standing mm -hmm. than his overall record 
and that might be true of most coaches, but to him, it's sort of to an extreme. And I don't just want to guess at that. So if you're looking for proof, here's proof. Before the 2016-2017 season, as you well know, I wrote a book called The Betting Black Book, and I did it with your help. You wrote the foreword. It provided analyzed betting data on all FBS coaches. One of the categories in the book was a coach's against the spread record out of conference, like in this game. Miami, under head coach Chuck Martin, is 0-7 against the spread in the last seven, nine con- last seven non-conference games. But in all of his conference games, Peter, showing you the contrast, ever since he's gotten there in 2014, he is 60% against the spread in all of his conference games. So out of conference, 0-7, the last seven games, that's dating back a couple of seasons. But for all of his conference games, 60% against the spread. He really cares about his conference, not so much about out of conference. Army will beat up your defense. And when push comes to, you know, cut block here, a coach like Chuck Martin would rather safeguard his defense from injury for the benefit of conference play. So if anything, he's looking to protect his defense, not kill them in a game like this. So right now, Peter, about half the offshore books are currently offering Army minus seven and a half. Places like Pinnacle, Bookmaker, Bet DSI, Five Dimes, et cetera. We recommend, I know you don't like it when I do this, but I, I got to give you the honest recommendation. Mm-hmm. We recommend taking Army but buying off the seven and a half to get the line to minus seven, but only if you pay minus 122 or less to get that half point. So we like Army buying the half point at minus 122 or less to get him to minus seven. All right, Steve, that was a classic quintessential. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com breakdown, touching on all the major uh, themes that he uh, looks at every week in these college football games. It backs up uh, what I was thinking about this game, and it definitely makes me like the over more and maybe the uh, the Army team total over more than any of these plays. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. If people want to know more about you, tell us what they can uh, find at collegefootballwinning.com. Thank you, Peter. At collegefootballwinning.com, All the company does is college football betting analysis, 365 days a year, even in the off season. We're a company founded on making our college football betting recommendations using sets of algorithms. We have now provided well over 600 formula, we call the algorithmic betting recommendations our formula. We've provided close to now 700 formula betting recommendations. Going into the season, our lifetime formula betting recommendations 60.66% against the spread so far this season for all of our college football betting recommendations. You heard this already 47 and 26. That's winning at a rate of 64.38%. That's all good news. The bad news is we are closed to new clients, but you can still go to collegefootballwinning.com and join our waiting list. And we hope you do. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Thanks so much. Talk to you again next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.